Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, next webinar, uh, Cloudflare's next webinar about the Jupyter Notebooks. My name is Stanisław Krzyżanowski, and I will have the pleasure of introducing you for the next, next 60 minutes to Jupyter Notebooks on Creodias. Uh, firstly, I would like to suggest a couple housekeeping rules. Uh, first of all, if you'd like to ask, if you have any questions uh, or remarks, or you would like to share any thoughts with uh, with me or with the rest of the viewers, please type them in the chat. Uh, I will answer all the questions uh, uh, in the end uh, of the presentation. We'll have a short Q&A session. Uh, secondly, uh, today's, today's presentation will consist of two parts. Uh, during the first part, I will introduce you to, uh, I will answer the question, what is Creodias? For those of you who are not familiar or uh, would like to refresh their uh, knowledge. Uh, yes, uh, there, was a, there is a question whether the video will be available after uh, the workshop. Yes, it will be available. It will, will be available on the uh, Cloudfarer's YouTube channel. You can find it uh, from our website. You can find it by typing Cloud Faro into the YouTube search engine. So uh, coming back, uh, today's, today's workshop will be divided into two parts. Uh, during the first part, I will answer the question, what is Creodias? Uh, what are the most uh, import, important components of it? Uh, and uh, I will try to show you how, uh, how and why it is a very useful platform in this day and age. And during the second part, I will walk you through the Jupyter Notebooks on Creodias. I will show you what uh, the notebook is uh, from, the, from the very beginning. Uh, I will uh, guide you how you can utilize it. Uh, and we will uh, hopefully end up with uh, a very simple example of uh, 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 of data, let's say processing, Sentinel data processing using uh, the notebook. So uh, let us begin. First question, what is, what is Creodias? Creodias is one of the uh, five, uh, five uh, in all, at all and four commercial Copernicus DIAS platforms. A DIAS is a data and information access service. Uh, it's a, each of the DIASs and CreoDIAS in specific is a platform, is a cl cloud platform that uh, brings uh, processing uh, to the data. To what the data you may, you may ask, I suppose that you know, because you, you are here, uh, we host, uh, lots and lots of uh, Earth observation data. Main, our main data broker is the Copernicus program. We'll come back to it later. But now let's focus on uh, what are the major components of, uh, of Creodias as a platform. So the first uh, very important part is the uh, EU data repository and catalog. So as I've, as I've mentioned, uh, Creodias is a platform that uh, is hosting and uh, disseminating Earth observation data. Uh, majority of that data is sourced from the Copernicus program. Uh, so we are talking about Copernicus program, which is one of the biggest data, Earth observation data broker, brokers in the world. So we are talking about uh, influx of data at a range of 25 terabytes daily. Uh, currently, we are sitting at at, uh, I think, above 21 petabytes of Earth observation data hosted online in the Creodias. Uh, and uh, the EU data repository and catalog component is extremely important. Uh, it's, uh, it's our backbone when it comes to, uh, when, when it comes to handling and uh, disseminating the data, downloading and disseminating the data to the users. Um, it consists of a couple uh, substantial, substantial elements. Firstly, we have, uh, we have the data repository uh, in which we keep the, uh, the online products. Then we have the data catalog, uh, which stores the information about the data, because in order to be able to, in, to be able to access the data, you have to 
you have to be able to look for it when we are talking about such massive quantities uh, of it. Uh, we have a set of tools called uh, ingestion engines. Those are applications that automatically download and index uh, uh, new data uh, into the into the system. And uh, we have a another set of tools uh, for accessing the uh, said repository. Uh, those we offer a wide variety uh, of those tools. Uh, from NFS through S3 through HTTP, uh, we also offer uh, we also host uh, web map service based applications. I, I will talk I will talk about it a bit later uh, via our cooperation with Sentinel Hub. So this is the uh, this is the data component. Uh, the second important component is the uh, cloud services component because. Only having the data online uh, would be not enough because in order to uh, derive uh, added value from Earth observation data, usually you have to interact with uh, not only not one, not two products, but so with uh, bigger sets of products. And that will require you to download it and then to have the processing power. That's why we offer uh, cloud services, which are placed uh, well, within the within the same environment uh, as the uh, data repository is, uh, so our users can access uh, the data immediately and process it and then share it with other users. So we have the cloud services that allow for it. Uh, we base our cloud services on the OpenStack technology. Uh, we offer all uh, classical uh, cloud services such as uh, computing and uh, Computing, meaning virtual machines, uh, network networking, security appliances, all those things you may require uh, when building your own uh, application and value chain uh, on our platform. But it's not all. Uh, we've built on also a set of tools and uh, and applications and platforms to make it easier and make it possible for CreaDIAS users to interact with the data. Uh, we have the CreaDIAS portal, the Earth Observation Data Finder, EO Browser, Cloud Dashboard. Cloud Dashboard is the uh, graphical interface management tool for the cloud services uh, and uh, other third-party applications. Today, we'll be talking, talking about Jupyter Notebook, but I will show you also the Earth Observation Finder uh, to be able to compare uh, different means of accessing the data and interacting with the data. Uh, I was talking a lot about the Earth observation data themselves, uh, so uh, let's let's talk about them a, a bit more. Here you can see a very uh, packed table uh, listing some of the products that we that are available uh, in the CreaDIAS environment. As you can see, a uh, very backbone uh, of our data offer are the uh, are products coming produced by the uh, Sentinel satellites. Uh, depending on the type of the product and on the processing level of the product, they are either available uh, fully online, that means you can access them immediately from the environment, or uh, there can be uh, ordered to be generated on the uh, generated uh, for the user or accessed from ESAS long-term archives. Additionally, apart from the Sentinel data, uh, we, are, we also host uh, the uh, data, the coverage of Europe for the Landsat satellites. We have uh, some additional satellites such as the en Envisat. Uh, we also recent, recently uh, we started hosting data. We started offering data, uh, very high resolution data from uh, a number of uh, satellite operators. You can, if you're interested in that, you can uh, check out that data on the CreoDIAS portal. We'll go to the CreoDIAS portal so you will see how it look, how it looks like. Um, Additionally, uh, what is not listed here because I wanted to make the presentation short to switch to the hands-on part as quickly as possible. Uh, additionally, we also uh, host a, a number, I think four, four out of six uh, Copernicus services on the CreaDIAS. Copernicus services are uh, 
quite wide uh, they wide uh, sets of data collections uh, those data are usually derived a derived from uh, satellite data themselves sometimes they are combined with on-site data or or there was some processing performed on it so this is our data offer it's it's wide currently we are sitting on uh, over 21 petabytes of data as i mentioned we are growing by 25 terabytes of data daily on average of course uh, we are doing our best to hold to hold all the data online uh, or as much data as we possibly can uh, because it's the easiest uh, the, it's the easiest for our users it's uh, it makes the data uh, the most accessible in uh, in all cases and as as i mentioned uh, uh, when i was describing the platform itself we have developed a number of user tools uh, that should and are helping our users uh, to manage the uh, environment to uh, utilize the data and to leverage the cloud services that we offer uh, the main the main tools that we that we have in Creodias is first of all the portal the Creodias portal which serves as a information and management hub you can find uh, uh, first you can find find links uh, to all the other tools from the portal you can find uh, our extensive FAQ base and uh, knowledge base and number of uh, guides how to how to use different parts of the environment and there is also a forum on which uh, using which you can uh, interact with our user support uh, which is our user support which is very responsive and will gladly help you uh, in uh, with any questions then we have uh, uh, aforementioned cloud dashboard cloud dashboard is a uh, graphical user interface tool for managing the cl your cloud resources as i mentioned our cloud is based on openstack so you can uh, manage your uh, cloud resources not only through the dashboard you can also manage it through the api it's a standard openstack api and through the command line interface then we have two uh, important tools for uh, data browsing and data search as you as you heard a couple of times by now, uh, we have lots of data. Uh, in order to interact with to interact with the data in an efficient manner, uh, one needs uh, proper tools to do it. First of all, we have the browser, which uh, serves as a let's say the easiest tool uh, for accessing the data. Uh, uh, it allows it allows uh, users, even non-registered ones, to choose uh, certain data products say certain uh, products and uh, visualize them on the map uh, it uses uh, sentinel hub engine generating the uh, web map uh, uh, web map services uh, then we, we have more advanced eu finder uh, this is our main tool for uh, data search uh, and we will take advantage of uh, of the eu finder api today uh, because we'll be looking for some specific uh, products and finally we have the Jupyter notebook uh, which is the topic of uh, today's workshop uh, Jupyter notebook uh, is uh, available to only to registered users however it is free of charge it is hosted on uh, on our uh, our virtual machines uh, it offers each user uh, I think up to up to two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it offers up to two gigabytes of storage, uh, and uh, it's probably the uh, easiest and the first tool to use when you want to uh, try uh, try the environment and get to know the platform, get to know how it works. And uh, if when you want to actually learn something, how to process the data using uh, different uh, programming languages. Uh, I will now break my own uh, housekeeping rules because there is a question uh, uh, very in line with uh, uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, Paulina uh, Bartkowiak is asking, is it possible to use our language in Jupyter Hub? In fact, yes. Uh, 
the Creodias Jupyter uh, Jupyter notebooks support our uh, support our language. Uh, today we'll not be talking about about it, but it's uh, it's fully usable, and it's uh, it can be it can be done. So please follow me uh, to to the Creodias portal. As you can see, we have uh, we have now ended up in the create on the main uh, site of the Creodias portal, uh, which should be your uh, hub for anything you need within the environment. Uh, today we'll be talking about the uh, Jupyter notebook, so we will head over to the tools and then we'll select Jupyter Hub, and as you may remember, uh, I have mentioned that uh, uh, in order to use Jupyter Hub, you have to be registered uh, because, uh, and I was uh, I was pre-registered, so there was no uh, no registration step. But uh, should you try it, you would have to set up an account and then uh, log in. So. First of all, uh, I would like to talk a bit about the uh, notebook in general. What you can see here is uh, uh, is the main page of the main page of the notebook. We shall now select uh, create a new notebook. Uh, I will uh, today we will work with Python three, but uh, as mentioned before, you can see there is there is a number number of available programming languages. For the notebooks, you can also use the R language. Also, Julia is, uh, is supported as well. So let us go into the notebook. First of all, what you can see here uh, is a standard, uh, standard notebook interface. You can work in two modes in this interface. You can either interact with the cell itself. Uh, this uh, single line is called a cell. Uh, or you can interact with the notebook. Uh, the difference can be seen. Can be seen. Uh, the difference is indicated uh, within this color here. When it's blue, you're interacting with uh, with the notebook. When it's uh, green, you're interacting with the cell. We have uh, two main types uh, of cells in Jupyter notebook. We have code cells and uh, uh, and so-called markdown cells. Markdown cells are plain text, basically, with uh, some formatting options. And code cells, well, are code cells. That's where you uh, prepare your code to be compiled. Uh, I will now uh, very quickly show you what you can do with Markdown. Uh, from my experience, it's very useful to learn a couple uh, of uh, shortcuts. Uh, for first, uh, first short, shortcut is uh, is M. This way, you can change uh, your cell type cell type from code to uh, Markdown. You can also do it using this drop down menu. This is code. This is Markdown. We shall uh, now write write what we are talking about. So, as I mentioned, we have two cell types. We have uh, uh, code. We have code and markdown. Uh, I'm using different different format formats uh, to show you what you can do with uh, with markdown uh, as a whole, because in markdown. You can do a couple things. You can list things. You can bold text. You can uh, italics text. Uh, e my bad, italic text. Uh, you can create also code blocks. And if you an example of an example of codebook shall 
um, code block would look like this. So uh, as you can see, I'm now, I'm, I'm now typing and formatting the text. Uh, in a minute, uh, our uh, our notebook will process it. Uh, so we can do it now. Now I'm just I'm showing you an example of code block, so we can do the most typical hello world and then print x. And if you want to, uh, if you want the cell to be processed, uh, you have to. You can either uh, use the run button or you can use a shortcut uh, you can push control enter enter and then we have one cell ready with uh, with some description of what we are doing uh, next useful shortcut is a shortcut for creating uh, additional cells you have two actually two shortcuts if you want an additional cell below uh, below the one you are in uh, currently uh, you use B. If you uh, need a cell above it, you use A. Easy, easy as can be. If you want to delete a cell, uh, you use X. Okay, so that was the uh, markdown cell, and now we have a code cell. So, and this one, this is a code cell. It's indicate it's indicated uh, with this uh, parenthesis here. And we'll once again use the most basic code well, uh, to show you uh, the basic principles of, uh, of Jupyter Notebook. So we have assigned, we have created a variable x. Uh, and if we process the cell, it will say hello world. Uh, additionally, we can also, if we create another cell with our B shortcut, uh, we can ask uh, the notebook to uh, to give us the output. Uh, so bas now, basically, in the uh, in this in this cell, I've asked uh, the notebook what is X, and uh, it tells me that X is a variable uh, with such string. So to summarize it, to summarize it, uh, maybe not to summarize it. Some more information about the uh, about the markdowns. Uh, we can have uh, we can have bigger headers. Whoops! Ah, you see. And now I have forgotten to uh, to change the cell type. And I can use my shortcut M to change the cell type and process it. And then I have the header. We can have smaller headers. Now I, I will use the drop down menu. We can have smaller headers. Header two. And if we process it, then, then it goes. Uh, there is much more uh, to the uh, markdown and uh, the uh, means of formatting. If uh, if you need anything, uh, I would suggest you should just Google markdown cheat sheet and uh, you'll get uh, a comprehensive list of all uh, of all the functions that are available in markdown. It's very useful. It's uh, it's commonly used to uh, to make a comprehensive uh, to make a comprehensive, understandable for everyone notebook. Now, I would like to talk just a bit about uh, about kernels and variables and uh, Jupyter notebooks. How do they act? So let's talk about kernel and variables. First of all. Uh, all the code cells are interconnected. So they are only a front end. Uh, behind them is uh, one Python kernel. So shall, should we ask for a list of methods and variable 
for this Python will get a list uh, with our X and at the end because we have defined it previously. Um, so and we can okay I will show you I will show you something. Uh, we can also uh, we can also define another variable. Let's say we'll have uh, variable y defined agilely as goodbye world and we'll process it. Uh, now if if we perform the same action as in as in cell cell number four, we shall get a list of variables including uh, y. And now, now we come to a uh, to an important point uh, about keeping uh, your order in the notebook, because you can possibly add. Oh, sorry, you can add a cell uh, above it, uh, and then uh, then you can uh, actually delete one of the variables. If you if you like to, and should you do it, uh, despite deleting the variable, uh, the information in the next cell still uh, consists uh, still has it because it was processed before uh, the variable was deleted. So that's why this command should be at the, at the very bottom. I hope it's uh, uh, it's quite clear. Another useful. Uh, useful trick uh, for uh, for working in the uh, Jupyter notebooks is collapsing salts. Let's say we will uh, list a long result. And now it prints uh, numbers from zero to 100 and it starts to look uh, basically unreadable. So a notebook allows you to collapse uh, a certain cell and uh, uh, scroll through it. It's a, it's a neat little trick. Uh, but I promised you that we'll be talking about uh, not only collapse uh, variables, but also uh, that we'll talk about uh, kernels. So uh, kernel uh, is the uh, programming language that is behind the notebooks front end, and you can do a couple things with it. Uh, you, first of all, you can, I'm sorry, uh, you can interrupt the kernel. And why would you like to interrupt the kernel? Because you don't want to crash your uh, your, en your engine. So let's say, oh, I'm sorry. Say that we let's say that we give a command to print ones every half a second. This command would eventually uh, crash uh, our our server. Not very uh, not very quickly, but it would. So if we, I'm sorry, that's that's embarrassing. What? Of course, while true. I'm sorry. So if we give that command, it starts it starts to print uh, once uh, every every half a second. 
So uh, if we want to stop it, and it will never end. So this indicator, uh, because this indicator is important. In the parentheses, you can see that uh, the cell is still executing. So, uh, and unless uh, in, in this parenthesis, we have a number and the cell is still executing and we don't want it to execute forever. So we can select kernel, interrupt, and now it has stopped. It has printed quite a lar large number of ones in, in there and we can collapse it as well. So finally, uh, the final thing I want to show you about uh, about uh, Jupyter notebooks is that you can you can actually uh, use bash slash terminal commands from the node level. How you do it? How you can do it? You use the exclamation mark. Let's say we want to see where are we. Uh, so uh, we can see that we have uh, in our uh, parent directory, we have uh, the uh, untitled notebook. This is the one that we are working in right now and the TIFF creator, and this is the one that will be our example in a minute. Uh, we, we can also uh, finally get to the Earth observation data at last. So let's say, and now it, it's important. Uh, this um, this notebook is set up on a virtual machine that is connected directly with the uh, EO data repository, and that's why uh, I will now list uh, all the uh, satellite all the satellites uh, all the satellites that uh, are available or the satellite data that, that is available from the from this notebook level. It will take a bit. I was hoping to list it. Let's give it another try. Well, I will show you. I will show you this in the terminal. Uh, but with this, we have uh, went through the basic activities in the notebook. Uh, I would like to talk a, just a bit about the, the toolbar, what you can do with it. So uh, you can do all the basic stuff, such as saving, renaming, cop making copies. You can do download the notebook. The standard, the standard notebook format is, is here. Uh, all the others require some, uh, some changes. But it's useful. It works. You can you can transfer it to LaTeX and then then share it. But the most useful way is to share it as a notebook. Uh, you can uh, perform all, all, all the activities that we have performed using shortcuts. You can perform also using uh, the tools from the edit uh, toolbar. Uh, you can uh, toggle some some things such as line numbers, quality of life changes, whether you like, you can like them, you can, you, you, you don't have to, uh, it's as easy as can be. Uh, you can manipulate the, car, the kernel, should I, now I can actually uh, restart the kernel and this we use all the variables that we have uh, put in, uh, I can also restart and clear all output which has deleted out from the uh, from the cells uh, shown here. Uh, I've mentioned that uh, uh, short, shortcuts are useful, so uh, you can learn them from the help, help button because there is a whole table for uh, keyboard shortcuts. I, I would I wouldn't uh, invite you to learn all of them, but some of them are really useful if you spend a bit more time in the notebooks. So now we can uh, exit this one. We have came back to the uh, view of the directory in which we set up our notebook, 
And as you can see, there is a difference in the uh, icon and the indicators between those two notebooks. Uh, the TIFF creator uh, is black. This one is, uh, is bright green. Bright green means it's still running. So the kernel behind it is still running. And we can turn it off, switching to the running tab, and we can shut it down. So yeah, now it's now it's it has been shut. Uh, I promised you that I will show you uh, I will uh, show you an evidence that uh, this and um, this programming environment is connected to the uh, EO data repository, and I will show it to you using a terminal. So now we have opened the terminal. The main directory of the uh, of the Earth observation data is called EO data. So if we go there, uh, we can ask the directory to list itself. And as you can see, we have uh, the uh, uh, satellites listed. Uh, in, each, uh, in each of those folders, you have uh, all the uh, date of all the satellite imagery uh, produced by that selected satellite. Today, in, uh, in my uh, short use case, into which we'll go shortly, uh, we will be working on the Sentinel-2 data. So uh, let's go to, uh, to the actual use case, what you can do with, uh, with the notebook in regards to, uh, to the data. I hope now it's, it's a, bit more, uh, a bit more readable. I have prepared, or we have prepared a very short example what you can do with the notebook to process the data. So first of all, we shall uh, select uh, a single uh, satellite image. Uh, we will be working on the Sentinel-2 uh, L1C image. Uh, it's, a, it's a standard. It's a standard Sentinel-2 uh, image in the visible in the visible range uh, but to do it we have to interact with the uh, Creodias uh, EO data finder the, the finder uh, is an engine that allows us to search for products accordingly to some defined parameters in our case uh, we shall query as you can see here we shall query for imagery uh, covering Warsaw uh, during the last winter, actually, in 2020. And uh, we allow our cloud cover to be between uh, zero and, uh, and 5%. Uh, and uh, we shall then list uh, 10 uh, of the products with the lowest cloud coverage uh, and select the one with the lowest. So let, uh, let us do it now. You can see we have listed the products, and now what I've mentioned, the collapsing and the decollapsing, I would say, uh, of the results. Uh, we have listed listed products, and we have selected one. Uh, if you are uh, if you are familiar with uh, Sentinel two data structure, you can see uh, that for, first of all, you don't have to be, to be familiar to recall that I have mentioned that all our data sits in the EO data, uh, in the EO data repository. Uh, and this is the output of this uh, cell is the path to a certain product. Now we have selected it, we have to open it. Uh, for this case, uh, I've de we've decided that we'll open uh, bands two, three, and four uh, to create a close to visible image uh, as a geo, geo tiff. In order to do it, you have to uh, familiar, familiarize with uh, <laughs> familiarize yourself with the uh, structure of Sentinel to data. Uh, it's available in uh, ESA's documentation. Pretty straightforward. We use it. We use it here in order to be able to open uh, selected selected bands. So, using the product identifier, uh, we open the bands we would like. It has been done. Then we shall create a geo tiff. 
in the which in the which we will uh, write down our bands to be later uh, displayed as an image. Uh, this geotiff shall be saved in the parent directory of the note of this notebook. So after we per we execute uh, aforementioned cell uh, in this directory, we shall see truecolor.tiff uh, file. which will take approximately which approximately will take probably 30 seconds as i mentioned the uh, computing resources assigned to uh, a single notebook are are a bit limited so if uh, you start using uh, jupyter notebooks on creo dias and uh, come up to the point when you decide, well, there is not enough resources for me. I, I have used, I have done my max with, uh, with, with what is given here. You can set up your own Jupyter notebook on uh, virtual machines in our, uh, in our environment, uh, in the CreoDIS cloud, and they will have same access to the EO data as, uh, as shown here. But in the meantime, we have produced our GeoTIFF. As I promised, uh, here is the true color image, or in this case, file. Uh, so the last step uh, for this very simple use case will be displaying the image. Uh, you can do it in a number of ways uh, using number of, uh, of tools. Uh, for this, uh, we shall use Rasterio, uh, simple, pretty simple library for for this use, and it's done. Uh, we have selected an image from Warsaw. We have processed it. I mean, we have selected the product. We have opened it. Uh, we have uh, saved it as a GeoTIFF and now displayed it. And it was what is most important, probably. It was all done within the CreateS environment, and it didn't require us to not download the data anywhere. So we basically skipped. Uh, that big that, that big uh, obstacle of uh, downloading lots of data. We have done it with one product. It can be done with uh, a dozens with a dozens of pictures. You can you can make time series with it. Uh, you can do it in uh, the free to use notebooks. You can you you can do it in the uh, uh, using virtual machines, installing notebooks on virtual machines. Uh, it's it's a real it's a really powerful powerful ability. So this and this summarizes my hands-on part of the workshop. Now I shall stop sharing my screen and we'll come back to the we'll come back to the presentation. I'm sorry, that wasn't that wasn't intended. Uh, oh, here you have the. Uh, the sentinel2 uh, product structure that's what i that's what i mentioned that we, when i mentioned that we are opening the uh, certain bands that's what we have done we went from the product to the granule to tile folder all all the way all the way down down to the image data uh, and we opened uh, bands to uh, three and four so having this in the background uh, now I can answer uh, your questions because we have we still have 15 minutes to do so. Uh, we have a question: uh, Is the notebook online to let us follow your example? No, this notebook was not available online. However, it can be uh, it, it can be made available to you, uh, and we can share it to you after the presentation. I'm sure. Uh, next, we have a question: What is the memory limits? For Jupyter notebooks, uh, so for the uh, RAM uh, usage, there is a limit, strict limit of two gigabytes. Uh, as for the storage, uh, there is no strict limit per se. However, uh, should we notice that there is too much storage being used by the notebooks, uh, we will uh, probably limit. Uh, limit the uh, storage 
of uh, of the user. So, but you can you can freely expect expect to be able to store a couple gigabytes of data there. It's not a it's not a problem. Uh, do you have any other questions uh, regarding either the Creodias or Jupyter notebooks or what we have talk, been talking here or any other method that you think I may be of uh, of uh, help? I would consider. Is there a way? Okay, there is none, another question. Is there, there a way to import other data? Yes, there are a couple of ways to import data. Uh, you can either upload the data into the notebook directly from your uh, working station. Uh, you can uh, interact with uh, uh, external databases uh, within the within the web. However, this this ability might be limited depending on the data database you selected. Uh, but should you face any limitations, you can also contact us and we can probably lift them. Uh, and uh, you can interact with the notebook from a virtual, from your virtual machine within the CreoDS environment. So uh, it is possible to set up a virtual machine that uh, will be storing certain data sets and uh, uh, sharing them with your Jupyter notebook. And it can be done uh, in a similar manner to how we have accessed the EO data. I can see that somebody is also typing. It, oh, it was thanks. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Uh, there is another question. Is it possible to not analyze data free? For example, MDVI, um, if I understand uh, your question correctly, yes, you can uh, you can prepare a script uh, uh, that will that will calculate an MDVI of a Sentinel two product in the Jupyter notebook. It's, it should be fully doable. Uh, we have the next question: Is it possible to share the notebook with other users on CreoDias? Unfortunately, currently it is not it is not possible to share notebooks. However, uh, it is being uh, planned to create a shared space or share, shared library for CreoDIS users to share their work uh, uh, notebooks as well. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Till the next time.